I started this YouTube channel by talking about the amazing scholarship that lets me study here for free. But over the past 22 months, my image of Japan has changed than what it used to be. When you finally get to know that your dream of coming abroad is getting true, then you tend to fantasize about the good things about the country, like meeting new people, experiencing its culture, tasting delicious food. But you tend to ignore not so good things about the country. At least that's what I did. Here are five things about Japan that I wish that somebody had told me earlier. Hi everyone, I'm Shri Priya, just your regular brown girl in Japan. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I make videos about day-to-day -day life in Japan, so check that out. And today we're discussing five things you should consider before moving to Japan. Let's go. Number one, the Abba Dabba Jabba problem. If you're coming here on a short trip, anything less than six months, then don't even worry about it. Skip this part. But if you're going to stay here for longer, keep watching. This one's for you. The language problem in Japan is real. Even if you're living in bigger cities like Tokyo, you should assume that nobody will understand anything for Japanese. Of course, the first solution is to use Google Translate. But if you do it for long enough, every time you go to a store asking for the most basic stuff, it automatically gets annoying. When I was coming here, people did tell me casually that you should learn basic Japanese. But what I thought basic Japanese meant was Konnichiwa! Arigatou gozaimasu! But that's not it. You should really know how to order certain things in a restaurant in Japanese and how to ask for something such as water. It's going to save you time and honestly frustration, trust me. Number 2. The Battle of Resumes This one's related to the first problem since Japan is a pretty homogeneous country. It also means that most of the people understand Japanese. And that rule applies to companies as well. When they're looking for an applicant, they want somebody who can speak Japanese and understand it so that they can contribute effectively to the meetings, which is understandable. But it also comes as a downside for somebody like us who are complete foreigners coming to the country for the first time. Of course, there are companies who do not have such a stringent requirement on language ability, but most companies do and that kind of restricts your job market. There is of course another alternative. I've seen a lot of foreigners teaching English to high school kids or middle school kids and of course that seems like a good option for a year or two, but it doesn't provide much growth as you would get in a corporate sector. So if you're looking for that, Japan might not be the perfect country for you. And if you're keen on coming to Japan, then I would suggest learn Japanese and understand the hierarchy that exists in the Japanese work culture. Number three, the forever outlier problem. This is completely my opinion, but I feel like Japanese people tend to be more reserved and shy than my other international friends. A few weeks back, I was introspecting and I realized that I really do not have any Japanese friends, even though I've stayed in this country for almost two years. And it's not like I did not meet Japanese people, I did, but at that time it seemed like they didn't want anything outside of the professional relationship that we had. For instance, when I came to Japan in fall of 2021, I suggested to my lab mates that, you know, we should just go see the Sendai beach because I am interested in going to Sendai beach. And they said, yeah, of course. And they looked at their calendars and they're like, oh, we can go in February, like four months later. So yeah, that plan didn't work out. The second alternative is to, of course, find international friends or people in your community who speak the same language. But the thing is, the people who come on exchange, they tend to leave in six months. So you make friends with them and they plan on leaving before you do. And it kind of gets lonely and you need to repeat the cycle over and over again. Number four, a sticky mess. While Japan seems so technically advanced on the social media and that is what my image was of Japan when I first came here, but administration does not come under that. There's just endless paperwork once you land in Japan. There's residence card, health insurance card, getting a bank account or even just getting a SIM. The paperwork never ends and all of it is in Japanese. So it can be annoying at the beginning and 
it's better to take somebody who already knows Japanese. Number five, an apple a day. You will need an apple a day because it takes forever to get an appointment here in Japan. And don't get me wrong, the health insurance system is great. You only need to pay 30% of the total bill no matter where you are in Japan. And even that 30% you can get back if you are enrolled in a student insurance at your university. So it's great that way, but it just takes forever to get there, even begin the first step. For instance, two months back, I had to rush to a gynecologist. I was on multiple painkillers and I couldn't really stand up. So I was in a lot of pain. And when I got there, because I didn't have an appointment, because it was kind of an emergency, I had to sit there for four hours before I could even get to the doctor. And I sat there for four hours in my pajamas and discomfort. There is of course ER if you're basically dying or if you have a very severe incident but it's kind of binary. It feels like I don't want to go to an ER room when I have fever but I do want to go to a doctor on the same day. Okay guys, that was it. Those were my top 5 things that you should consider before moving to Japan. Of course, there's a lot more things that I wish I could cover but maybe next time. If you've experienced anything similar or anything completely different, please comment down below. I would love to hear your stories and like, share, subscribe. Okay, bye.